So today I'll be upgrading a Lenovo ThinkCenter M900 small form factor PC with the best possible upgrades that I have on hand. I'll be listing prices on the screen as I go. And this thing originally shipped with a i5-6500 CPU, 8GB of Samsung DDR4 2400MHz RAM, even though it does cap at 2133MHz RAM, and no SSD and no hard drive. First up is an Intel Core i7-6700 CPU at 3.4GHz. 16GB of Samsung DDR4 2400 megahertz ram a 512 gigabyte time tech nvme ssd strapped into a pcie express nvme adapter tp link ac 1200 wireless dual band pcie adapter and an amd radeon e9173 pcie low profile graphics card with two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Time to take this to the workbench to start installing. So let's open up the case. So the first thing I'd like to do is get the CPU replaced and put some new thermal paste on there. So first um, we'll take the front panel off and we just lift up these three little metal clips or plastic clips, sorry. And it should come off quite easily. And next you'll see a little blue tab up here that you can press forward. And this will allow these hard drive bays and solid state drive bays to lift up. And now we have full access to the motherboard, PCIe slots and RAM slots, as well as the uh, SATA cable connections and some extra space for fans. All right, so we'll start by taking this plastic CPU shroud off and you just have to pull these two tabs and lift. Very simple. And now we can take a Phillips head screwdriver and remove the four screws to lift the CPU cooler off of the motherboard. To release the i5 CPU from the socket, you push this tab down lift up and gently lift up the CPU from the socket being sure not to drop it as there are pins underneath that you want to keep intact. So now we can take the i7 CPU and you want to line up there's a little arrow that you'll see on the CPU itself with a little circle on the motherboard that you want to line up as well as you'll see the notches on the CPU itself that will fit into the socket you'll know what it looks like. And I have some Arctic MX-4 Thermal Compound, AKA Thermal Paste. So now for the RAM install, just to note, you want to install into DIMM2 and DIMM4. Just look for the two blue slots. So there is a 2.5 inch hard drive or solid state drive caddy and what's kind of cool with this model is that it has a little fan um, attached to it to keep it cool. So being that we're not installing a hard drive or an SSD, or at least a 2.5 inch one at this moment, um, what I'm gonna do is detach this from the caddy and maybe try to mount it on the rear of the case to get some extra airflow and to create a little miniature exhaust fan on the case. So we do have passive air cooling from this honeycomb panel here on the rear of the uh, PC case. And what I'm going to do is take a zip tie and feed it through and we'll mount the little miniature air exhaust fan right here to just help with some extra air cooling because I think with the addition of the i7 CPU graphics card, uh, we're filling up all the PCIe lanes I think some extra cooling might be nice. Um, I should note, beyond the mess of cables, we do have an air intake fan on this case as well.
Okay, so I think that's actually really cool. Um, now we have our little miniature exhaust fan. And let's get ready to install into the PCIe lanes over here. So we start by just gently lifting up on this little piece here. And then we can take out these and set them aside. Okay, and let's start with installing the graphics card. Next up is the PCIe Wi-Fi card. And we'll set off the antenna to install later. And now the NVMe SSD PCIe adapter. Um, so I actually forgot to put the heatsink and thermal pad onto the NVMe. And so now it's on. So everything's looking pretty good. Let's put that CPU shroud back on. All right, now let's put this thing back together and get to doing some performance tests. So you'll notice on this graphics card that we only have a full-size display port and two mini display ports. So if you're not connecting with display port, you'll need adapters. Right now, for today, I'll be using a HDMI to display port adapter. One unexpected addition to this case is the blinking green and red lights from the PCIe NVMe adapter. So I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. All right, so I've got all the drivers installed. So I have my gaming SSD hooked up via USB 3.0 card reader. And I'm going to be recording the screen for gameplay just because uh, I get slightly better performance. Meaning that if I do screen record, I will see uh, drops in frames per second and GPU usage as well as CPU. So let's see how well this game called Skater XL plays. So this Dell monitor is actually 1920 by 1200 resolution and I'm going to try gaming in 1080. However, uh, for some games, games we'll have to set the resolution a bit lower to increase the performance. And this is a game called Skater XL that I have running at 1280 by 720 graphics quality set to very low and low uh, windowed full screen with VSync activated. So let's see how well this performs. So we have frames per second staying within the 50s and dropping down to the 40s, uh, which is totally acceptable for a game like this. We don't need huge high frame rates to have a good experience. And I think we can mark this off as totally playable. Uh, we're not getting any screen tearing, uh, no weird glitches. Uh, gameplay is about as smooth as it's going to get. And you know what, I would be happy playing at this resolution as well. Um, having a nice monitor does help. Okay, so I have the game Dead by Daylight loaded up, a game that I like to pick up and put down once in a while. Um, I have the graphics settings set to low, and I have the resolution set to 65%, um, but kept it full screen just because if I take the full screen off, then we're playing with a very small window. Uh, performance can increase being windowed like this, but let's just see how it plays uh, full screen. And what I'm looking for is a bare minimum of around 30 frames per second to keep this game playable. All right, so we're actually sitting a little higher than I expected. Um, just walking around, we have the frames per second in the late 40s to 50. And as more action starts happening on screen, it does dip down a little bit into the 30s, as we just saw right there. But that's not too bad. So, all right, so what I'm looking for is just gameplay performance without screen tears, without glitches, without weird activity and most of all responsiveness um that is what we're getting right now this is totally playable and much much better than the integrated graphics um 
I'll see if I can get in a chase here and then move on to the next game. All right, so we're about to see a little bit more action on screen. Let's see how performance is uh, pretty good. Now, I bet that we could probably increase the resolution and we wouldn't take a huge performance hit, but I'm not gonna try that in the middle of a match right now. So we'll just call this game totally playable. Oop. All right, so I'm gonna try out Fortnite and right now I have it set to performance mode and we'll see what kind of performance we can get. I'll set the frames per second way up to unlimited just to see what happens. And we're actually going to try running this in full 1920 by 1200 resolution. And I have a feeling that this game will be totally fine like this. And I'm kind of excited to try it out. The game actually looks really good in this resolution. And we're sitting around uh, 60, 70 frames per second. Let's see how well it performs. Okay, so just walking around we have, and running into people, we are getting still good frames per second getting into the 80s, the 70s, I would say playing this game with this resolution is very doable and a great experience. So overall I'm very pleased with the upgrades to this PC and hopefully this gives you some ideas of what you can do with your Lenovo ThinkCenter M900 or something similar to it. Um, I'm very happy to have been able to try out this AMD Radeon graphics card. It's not really something that you'd find off the shelf. Um, of course Something even like this uh, GT 1030 would perform a little bit better. And of course you can get something better like a 1050 Ti or a 1650 low profile. We are working within that budget realm. And as uh, you saw earlier, something like this AMD GPU doesn't cost an arm and a leg. In fact, you could upgrade this whole system for the cost of a lower end graphics card. So... Hopefully this gives you some ideas and hopefully you learned something. So let me know if you've done something similar in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.